Un, deux, test. Un, deux, test. And I think we're live, baby. We're live! Oh, oh. oh my God. <laughs> We we're are. Live. Yes. We're Yay. live. Yay! Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to my first live. And uh, I have a special guest today, is Gab. He's joining me today for moral support. Hi, nice to meet you. I am scared to death right now. They know. He's much braver than I am. Anyway, so we're testing out the platform. We're going to have some fun with it. If you guys want to pop in and say hi, ask questions, we're here. And uh, that's it. We're just going to, you know, chat about some stuff and uh, take it from there. So please feel free to chime in if you'd like to. So why are you scared to death? Um, uh, you're so good at this. It's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so we started this thing like, ah, oh, let's make a channel. And uh, we both started at the same time. And she has about like a million view and I'm at <laughs> number 42. <laughs> mm, I wonder why that is. <laughs> I think it's because I talk about girls going down on girls. and. Yeah, but you're so natural at it. Like I uh, started with Jog to talk about science, <laughs> like super niche <laughs> things. Like, <laughs> like the subject might be less uh, <laughs> less attractive. But now I'm trying, uh, I'm thinking I will pivot. But welcome to our nice little studio that we built for not your channel. Now we're going to make it, this is now all yours. So if yes. you need modifications <laughs> to it, I will do it. <laughs> this is actually Gab's studio. So he also has, uh, as he was saying, he has a YouTube channel that he is starting out as well. And uh, I am a special guest in that studio today because he has all the fancy equipment set up. I just use my phone and a $30 tripod from Amazon. I don't need that many fancy things. <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> well, I have heard you. So let's do like questions and answer and I'll be the guy asking questions. Sure. And if people want to ask questions, be uh, be like uh, be sure to ask them in the chat. I'll be looking at my left to see them. Um, but I'll also ask questions that I heard y people ask you at the, the, the table in the last few days. Um, so what is your channel and why are you starting a channel on YouTube? So to give you guys a little backstory about olives and orgasms, I am at a time in my life now where I have some spare time to do some creative projects, you know, and it's uh, very grateful to be in that position. And for a long time was, you know, figuring out what to do, how to do it. And, you know, one of the things that I am really passionate about is food. I love to cook for people and provide them with amazing culinary experience. And so I was like, okay, you know, I could do something with food. But I also really like talking about sex. And I have been told in the past that uh, I can be quite gifted. I have a sexual artistic gift, as Gab would put it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's really new for me. And, you know, I'm just starting to uh, explore many different things in my sexual journey. And so I was like, oh, maybe I'll start a podcast. It could be fun, but really not sure exactly what. So in the last couple of months, I've uh, been thinking about how to bind those two things together. And that's how Olives and Orgasm started. I was like, you know what? I'm going to cook. I'm going to do some kind of like cooking social media show while I talk about sex. Could be fun. It's a creative project. Like if it works, great. If it not, who cares? We're just having fun. But um, I started with his support, of course. Uh, he just kept pushing me to press record and just talk about whatever. And it was really scary at first, but I'm happy you did it. Thank you. All, all, the, all my pleasure. All the pleasure he gets is gets all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> so I started doing that. But I was finding it kind of challenging to cook and talk about sex at the same time. So I just started pressing record, sitting on the couch and talking about some familiar stories. And I much enjoyed that process. It was a lot easier for me. I had fun doing it. I really liked the editing process. And then I started to get some traction online really quickly. Uh, some good feedback, some good comments, some sketchy ones too. There are a lot of creepy people out there, but a lot of really nice positive support from my current community. 
And it's just kind of taking off from there. Like, I don't really know where this is going to go. I'm just, uh, like, we just keep reiterating, like, it's a process. It's fun. It's creative. Just keep trying. Just keep talking and trying my best to be authentic and honest and talk about things that I like to talk about, even though it might make people feel uncomfortable sometimes. Um, so I have no idea where this is going to go. Or, yeah, we'll see. Where would you like it to go? Like, do you have a vision? Do you have like a one year, two year, five year vision? I mean, eventually I would like to figure out how to pair the food and sex thing. Maybe having some kind of, I don't know, online cooking show or something with guests where we talk about some taboo topics and it's just fun and light and creative and I don't know. Honestly, you asked me that question, but no, I really don't have a plan. Right now, it's just day by day trying to put out some content, brainstorming about some topics, some experiences that I've had that we've had together. I mean, I'm sure people are also curious about you and like how you fit into all this and your journey with me as well. Aren't you guys? I mean, I feel like most of my audience is, well, according to the stats anyways, is like 91% male. No surprise there. I mean, I would like the females to watch as well. So I hope to target them at some point. But right now, it's all men. So <laughs> I'm sure they're all wondering too, like, who's Gab? Like, what did he do to find this woman? I was <laughs> brutally honest. <laughs> he was brutally honest. <laughs> That was the, like, a... Uh, The how. But also, it was like a year of preparing myself for when the proper woman would come by. I would be able to ah, <laughs> grab up to her and never let go. Which I did. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we have people watching, just we so do. you know. We yeah, do. Oh, like my uh, God. People care. We have Adam, Mark, Kim, Stefan. Like, uh, people are commenting. It's uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Thanks, you guys. break my record. <laughs> Just squashed my record. I just posted a new video last night and it has over 4,000 views so far. And Gab has a, you know, about 20 views on each of his videos so far. So if you feel bad and you want to support his cause, you can always no. <laughs> log into his YouTube channel. Please don't. It's horrible so far. Nah, <laughs> if you're into like science and crypto and business and. Uh, What else do you guys talk about? Politics, projects, entrepreneurship, finances. He's your guy. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> I'm, I was thinking, like, this is going to take 10 years of practice. That, 10 yeah. years of practice. So, baby, don't be discouraged. Like, you're going to see bad results, but we just have to practice. <laughs> and we just, like, press record. And you're, like, <laughs> some kind of, like, voodoo stuff where you're, like, Ooh. Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> All professional <laughs> and communication. Like, <laughs> like oh, damn. <laughs> Not at that level yet. That's uh, true. When we God. had the conversation about starting a channel, he said, you can't stop. It's going to be tough. Like, it's going to take five to ten years, but you've got to do it. You just have to post. You just have to post. Don't be discouraged. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And I was like, oh, Okay, fine. I don't know what I'm embarking on, but I'm going to do it anyways. But um, anyways, clearly the cliche sex sells is, you know, it's it's true. But right. I also like to think that it's not just that. And I have a very charming personality that shines through the screen, which is also why you guys enjoy listening to me. Um, we have people who have questions. And uh, I have a few uh, uh, notes here on the phone. Uh, so... If you want to send questions in the chat, do it. And uh, one of our goals today would be to receive a, I don't know what they're called in YouTube. A like sticker? A sticker. Like you can a, send a sticker. Like <laughs> a, a tip chat thingy, which would be our first ever. I don't Yay. even know if the channel is <laughs> properly set up to receive them. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so I have a list of topics. I'm gonna just going to like. Wait, yeah. I want to hear what, what are people saying? Are they what just are sending emoticons? Saying? Oh, so, uh, 
No, they say uh, hello from Virginia, hello from Kentucky, hello from Panama City, Florida. Um, you have beautiful hair. Oh. And <laughs> he didn't like direct, so I, but I don't think he was talking <laughs> about mine. <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh, and Kim <laughs> says that it's fun to see uh, Gab with you. Oh. And uh, we have a few uh, comments like that and emoticon that are too far from my old eyes to read yeah. or to properly <laughs> describe. Um, do you want me to just pick a topic? Well. Or you want to address something. Hmm. No, I want you to pick a topic. All right. Like roulette. Well, your channel is Olive and Orgasm. I will pick orgasms. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a great topic. Um, <laughs> what about them? Are they so elusive? Is it hard? I mean, what about the difference between a guy and a girl? Tell us your experience, baby. All right. Well, from my experience... As a 35-year-old woman, I will be honest with all of you to say that I really only started experiencing real orgasms like two years ago. Well, consistent orgasms, let me say. So, I was in a long-term relationship for maybe about nine years in my 20s, and I never had an orgasm once in my life, probably due to lack of experience, probably due to lack of knowledge of my own body. We had sex. It was good, but I didn't know any better. I didn't really know myself or what else was out there or how to have an orgasm, and he also didn't really try. We didn't really talk about it that much. Um, we broke up. I met a nice friend, and we had some fun together, and I had a first orgasm with him, and I was like, what? Is this what it feels like? Is this what an orgasm feels like? Holy shit. I've been missing out on this for like 10 years. I thought I was broken, and uh, he was the first guy that made me orgasm, and uh, you know, happened maybe two, three times. But even at that point, I still didn't really understand what was going on in my body. And um, after that, never had an orgasm again. No guy was able, ever able to make me come. And I literally thought I was broken. I was like, bah, I'm just one of those girls that like can't get an orgasm. It's okay. I still have a lot of fun with the, the sex, <laughs> with <laughs> the sex that we're doing. Um, I also really like to please. I'm a huge pleaser and I get off on pleasing my guy so much. He can attest to that. So I often put myself aside in sex like, oh, it's okay. Like, I just want to give you pleasure and na, na, na. And then, you know, sometimes the guys are like, oh, okay. And other times they're like, no, I want to try and make you come. And I always used to say, no, it's fine. I have a really hard time coming. Don't even worry about that. Because I also didn't want to spend like two hours lying there like trying waiting for to make me come like I'm tired I want to go to bed at some point you know and um yeah so that was that and I never really masturbated either up until a couple years ago so never really made myself come um I only discovered the shower head like maybe five years ago and vibrators and such so yeah but then I met Gab and he was a challenge accepted kind of human. He'll take any challenge you give him and he'll like figure it out and make it happen. And if he can't, he will die trying. <laughs> so um, I told him this, that same spiel. Oh, I can't come. It's okay. Like, it's all about you. And like, I'm still having fun. I'm still like enjoying the pleasure you're giving me. And he was just like, nope, like I'm going to make this happen. And I felt really comfortable with him. And he, I think you made me come for the first time with your hands. I don't know how long it took. Probably like. I, my uh, arm was tired. So his his <laughs> arm was tired. <laughs> it must have took a while. But it happened. And he didn't give up. And he was so consistent and made me feel comfortable. And it happened. And I was like, holy shit. Wow. And then from then on, we just kept practicing more and more and more. And he never comes first. Every time we have sex up until this day, it's like you have an orgasm first all the time. So then consistently, every time we would try different things. And I was slowly starting to get to know my body more. And finally, um, sitting on him was 
uh, my most preferred way. And I learned what to do with my body in terms of like contractions and tension and things like that. And consistently from then on, it's just like, I know what to do now. I know how to have an orgasm. So I make myself orgasm. He just like facilitates the way for me. But um, I learned how to do it basically. Well done. Yeah. And we were actually like with a girl the other night and she reminded me so much of myself because she said that whole thing to, I asked her like, oh, how do you like to come? And she's like, oh, I don't like, don't worry about me. I, uh, I can't orgasm like that. It takes really long and hard. And like, I just don't, I can't orgasm, but I'm still having a really good time. And I thought of myself and I was just like, oh, this girl, she just needs like a good partner to practice with. And I think we're, you know, a yeah, great pair good for partners that. To we're practice. good partners and we're good teachers. <laughs> 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 to practice with. Um, I, have a, I have a good question from Suprio. Ali, t- it's a two-part question. Okay. Ali, are you bisexual? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first part. And can you spot a bisexual woman in a group? Oh. So, first part, are you bisexual? Um... You can answer that question. <laughs> I really cannot. <laughs> so I think so. Um, I say I think so just because there's so many labels out there now that I kind of lose track of what's what. I just like to say I'm me, sexually fluid, whatever. But yeah, I guess you could say I'm bisexual. I don't, I wouldn't, I'm not interested in dating a woman romantically. But I am interested in sleeping with a woman. I enjoy a woman's body. I enjoy a woman's touch. Um, I enjoy having sex with women, especially as a trio. There's just something about it that's really special in sharing a woman. But I've also thought about women since I was, I don't know, in my teens, I guess. Um, You know, women's bodies are beautiful. They're Very nice. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. And I see the way that you um, enjoy them. <laughs> It's really inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. Um, so, yeah. So, I am bisexual, I guess. Like, uh, if some of you are wondering if Gab, c- you know, kind of not forces, but encourages me to... Uh, be in this lifestyle with him, you know, because he obviously gets like a lot of pleasure from this. Um, No, I come into this willingly. It's all me. It's my choices. Uh, When I met Gab too, I specifically told him that I wanted to be with someone who I could experience um, different sexual things with, especially with other women. So, I mean, he was pretty happy when he heard that. Yay! <laughs> Which is what I was searching. But other part of the question, can you spot a bisexual woman in the group? No, I cannot. I'm awful at this. I'm so bad at meeting women in a natural context and, like, flirting with women. I, c- I cannot. I just can't do it. That's something that I'm struggling with because I would love to meet more women in a natural context where we can like pick up a woman in a natural context and um my bi radar is just off so it usually comes with after a few drinks (laughs) and conversations of like so have you ever been with a girl and like have you ever thought about being with a girl but um i would love to meet a woman who is openly bisexual or sexually fluid or open to being with other women uh, and who's not shy about it and who just like puts it out there because uh, you know it takes work away from me or not work but it would just be nice to to have someone do a little bit of the work and the the flirting than me always doing the approaching i hope that answers your question I thanks hope for your it question does. um so another question by mark What's the best way to bring up a threesome to my partner? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's such a classic question that <laughs> is everywhere online. Plus, like it, it must really depend. Like, have you met her yesterday or like 15 years ago? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, let's ask him. When did you meet her? Yeah. Are you married? 
because <laughs> I think it's uh, it's easily <laughs> brought about like a first or second date, you know? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you don't like really know. There's we we get to know each other. Oh, by the way, I would really love a threesome. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I like this drink. But after like 15 years of marriage, when things are like maybe on the rocks a little bit or... And you don't know. I'm guessing it's a it's a different topic, but I might be wrong. Um, well, but do you have a trick in the meantime? I think the first thing is uh, it's so important to know if the other person is open to doing this, which I guess is your question as how to bring it up. Um. Well, actually, wait, before I answer this, let me ask you, because you have some friends who have been in couples for a while and who've talked about it and who've brought it up. So h what was their approach? I'd like to know that first before I answer this question. So I know of at least two guys who it's it's out there in the relationship like, a, I don't know. Not first date, but like a few few weeks. Like, hey, it would be cool. Like, it's on my bucket list to have sex with two girls. It would be cool. Would you be down for that? And the like, both got a yes. Like, yeah, sure, I'll be down. Uh, then one had like um, some sort of conditions. Like, I would like the girl not to be somebody close to that we're gonna meet again. Like uh, every. Uh, every other weekends um so both got a uh, pretty definitive like yeah sure let's do it let's have fun together but then life happened and it's like they have to make it happen and they just didn't because how <laughs> that's the thing it's like where do i go like it's uh, it's really hard to and the ones that did was through like work and practice basically like you just have to like you get up in the morning i have to do an action for my tree some projects I, hey would you be down to come with me and then my girlfriend oh, i'll create a profile da, da, da. i have to say you have to do something it's a lot I of work yeah <laughs> well it's you have to do something then it's like uh there's m it's harder to build a house you know <laughs> it's work <laughs> but it's doable but if you do nothing Chances are nothing will happen. But uh, it's like both are out there. And it brings me to uh, the thing. Even open people, when they're younger, they do it less. Seems to me. Because when we went to that sex club or yeah. we walk by the sex resort uh, in Puerto Morelos, most of the people there are older. And so they're what? Like more comfortable with their open I think you get to a certain age where you're just like, fuck it, fuck everyone. I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm going to live my life the way I want to. I'm going to fuck who I want to. I'm going to fuck as many people as I want to. And just, um, yeah, I, I think you're right about that. It comes with age and maturity and experience. and. So that's it. They're just raising their kids now, and they'll be porks later. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be porks later. <laughs> but uh, I have. I want to comment on that actually about how to bring up the the threesome. So I think um, both people need to be motivated to do it. Obviously, um, why don't you like get a nice bottle of wine? <laughs> it I'll was twelve years, by the way. It was, was twelve years. Twelve years relationship. So. Get a bottle of wine. Get a bottle of wine. Have like a nice dinner. I don't know the nature of your sexual... Why am I... I'm looking at the computer all the time. I don't know the <laughs> nature of your sexual relationship. But if you're comfortable about, you know, talking about sex and fantasies and stuff like that and playing around and, um, you know, get the bottle of wine. Bring it up subtly. You know, how do you feel about other women? Um, have you ever thought about other women? What do you think about, you know, just trying something new? Um, I'm not sure how that conversation would go, but I wanted to get to my other point, which was if she said she was interested, I would give her the power to, um, do the work and find the girl. Um, so hopefully her motivation is high enough because I feel like if it comes from her, she'll be, 
way more likely to be excited about it, be encouraged, um, be motivated to do so if she's the one that gets to, you know, pick the woman, uh, initiate the conversations, stuff like that. So if you guys were to, let's say, try an app and put yourselves out there, um, she has the power to communicate. Well, not the power, but she, you know, like this is what we do in our relationship. I feel way more comfortable being the initiator and being in charge of all the, the conversations and such. Gab is there. He sees everything. He's uh, welcome to participate if he wants to, but he chooses not to just because he doesn't really have to do <laughs> much of the work. Um, I feel like if the women connect well together, then you're going to have a good experience. Um, and yeah, I hope that gives a little bit of insight. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's basically just bring it up and just like between two <laughs> two sips of wine, like how about having sex with another girl? Yeah. <laughs> or you know, like try. Uh, I mean, I don't know if th this is too out there, but try going to uh, on a Friday night, like check out your local sex club. And uh, what I like about those places, or the, at least the ones that I've been to and that we've been to, is. They're super respectful and you're really not obliged or feel pressured to engage in any kind of activity, any kind of sexual activity, any kind of like normal going out activity. You guys can just sit in the corner, get a glass of wine, get a meal and just observe everybody. You don't have to touch anyone. You don't have to do anything. And so just having just in, in, um, Enjoying that activity together without that pressure of having to do anything can open the doors for some like good conversation, some like, you know, uh, next steps. I don't know. What do you well, think? Here's another idea. Like, because it's like <coughs> the question is like, oh, would you be interested in having a threesome with me and another girl? But how do you get to that question? Well, how about you say something like, um, so I was watching YouTube the other day and I found a girl who had like a channel <laughs> and you want to watch a video with me and uh, <laughs> like just bring up you. <laughs> oh that. my God. Gab is really good at these kinds of conversations. So if you have a question about how do I say this? How do I say that? How do I bring it up? He is your guy. <laughs> Any kind of uncomfortable conversation. Uh, another question, which I think I know the answer, but it could be surprising. Do you prefer MFM or FMF? Which, in which case, I guess M is female, uh, M is male, and F is female. FMF. So Wh FMF or MFM. Oh, FMF. Obviously. Yay! <laughs> well, <laughs> I've never been with two guys before. Uh, it's not something that I particularly ever fantasize about. I do prefer being with women. If an opportunity ever came up where there was like two guys, I'd be like, all right, sure. I don't know if Gab would be, uh, I don't know if that ever opportunity will ever <laughs> present itself. <laughs> you never know. But I do prefer being with two women and Gab. Um, I've never fantasized about being with, with two guys before. But again, if it ever comes up, I won't say no to it. Uh, that's just my preference. Interesting. And um, you said being with two women, which brings up the question, <laughs> like, have you ever been with two women? <laughs> <laughs> that makes four people. I meant another woman and myself. But no, we slash I have not yet been with more than two women And I am, um, that is a fantasy of mine. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Which is kind of a sick fantasy because I feel like it's more of a fantasy for you. But I would love to one day have like a harem of women, <laughs> be in a harem of women <laughs> with Gab there, just like acting like a spoiled king. <laughs> <laughs> the queen has entered the room. <laughs> With me being number one, though, obviously. Yes. We're all your loyal subjects. Yes. That's that's why it works, because Gab does a very good job at making me feel like number one all the time. Um, 
And I really appreciate that because when we started all of this, I said that I need to feel special. I need to feel validated. I need to feel like you're always there and I'm always your number one. And he said, yes, baby, don't worry. And I must say, like, you do a really good job of doing that. Oh, thank you, baby. He does. All the credit is yours. No, it's not. So Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at your list of topics yeah. and... Um, there's the I, I think right now we have kind of an un unique opportunity <laughs> because <laughs> like you're so popular on YouTube that's like insane. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So we're like it a lot of things in life are related to fantasy, right? But fantasy, correct me if I'm wrong, fantasy is like a, a thing that most people will get into for a night and then come back to their regular life. Uh, but in our case right now, we kind of have time and have like some resources and like we could travel and make this fantasy uh, thing more like a um, daily <laughs> thing. <laughs> not like, not the two that we need to uh, have a threesome per night, which like I wouldn't want anyway. Like it's that's a lot know, of work. Yeah, it's <laughs> that it's not normal. <laughs> normal <laughs> kind of is nice, you know. Netflix and chill. Um, but if we had to build a, let's say, like in a few months, it's gonna be like rainy here and not so nice, and we'll want to go somewhere. Like, what's your fantasy of? Like what a normal, sexy, nice day would look like with you being like some online YouTube sex guru now. <laughs> um, okay, well, I can describe you a very vivid scenario. Please do. So when low season comes and it's gray and gross here, we would go somewhere like Hawaii, somewhere sunny, uh, somewhere with mountains, somewhere with water, somewhere very beautiful and nature-like. And we would be staying in some kind of beautiful open air, all white curtain-y sort of beachy condo thingy. All right. All right. And I could picture myself waking up in the morning alone. But you're there, but I'm alone. And I'm wearing a bikini. <laughs> and I'm wearing some kind of white flowy cover up. And I wake up and I stretch and it's a beautiful morning. And I get up and I go walk over to my office and to my computer. And I like check some stuff, check all the cool comments you guys are leaving me and then I walk to the kitchen and you're sitting there in a big white robe talking to some guy who I think maybe works for us and you're laughing and you're chill and you're relaxed and I come and make us a beautiful little breakfast and then we set out for the day to do some kind of adventurous activity where we meet up with a friend of ours, a female friend, and we go on some kind of hike. And it's all fun and it's cool and we're laughing and it's hard and, you know, we're sweating and we uh, get a lot of physical activity in. And then at the end of the hike, we come back to this beautiful space and we all shower and get all fresh, and I make this like beautiful dinner for us, and we enjoy some wine, and then we just spend the evening playing together. How does that sound? Yay! It sounds great. Just easy, simple, relaxed. It's perfect oh. because yes. And I just want to add something to that, and then um, after a couple of days or so, we meet another friend of ours. So we have like a bank, not a bank. We have friends. A bank makes it sound like it's we're just a constellation. Like, it's a constellation <laughs> of friends that we've built that we enjoy spending time together and doing activities with. 
where we occasionally sleep together and play together and laugh together in bed and you know just 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 fun just fun is that unrealistic no i don't think no, so i don't think so now you just gave us the blueprint so we can make like a to-do list <laughs> <laughs> find a place find a beach find a randonnée nearby <laughs> well you said fantasy so i guess that this sounds more realistic than fantasy but it doesn't matter it could still be my fantasy and be real at the same time well that was the nature of my question it was more like let's design a fantasy world and live in it <laughs> <laughs> well what would your fantasy be um my fantasy i wake up in the morning we like it's a uh, it's play it's morning play time i love morning play time it's, it's which might include sex but it's a whole process <laughs> that includes <laughs> like having fun in bed talking chilling no business uh and that their shower and getting up then um i'd say that i like this coffee um let's like uh, do something brainy a little bit in the morning like we can which this counts like as uh, sitting down and talking and everything so i do it with Jacques often and everything and uh so coffee um coffee like uh, we talk <laughs> so we talk yeah uh then it's sports time so then it's like uh, your fantasy and mine are like really similar so if it's winter it's ski time if it's summer it's like i'd love to learn to kite but uh, walk in forests like some kind of adventure sport and um then we come back to well here we have a small community who's we it's you and me um ah who's uh, <laughs> the randonnée? um yeah or is it like just you uh sometimes it's just me mm -hmm. sometimes it's you and me and sometimes we're a constellation. Oh. So I would alternate between the different settings. Uh, and then at night, we come back to something that looks like what we have here, which is a small, you know, like a village of people and there's a community. And then let the feast begin. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's an evening of wine and food and sex. And then we sleep. <laughs> That's my fantasy day. Like, that's my real, that's how I want to spend the rest of my <laughs> days, <laughs> which we kind of are. <laughs> and what about you guys? What's your fantasy day like? Let us know. It's fun to talk about your perfect day, yeah. including like work, sex, lifestyle, health, all those things. If you had to describe what your perfect day would be like, as ridiculous as it might sound to you, doesn't matter. It's fantasy. What would it be? Think about it. Yeah. Um, I have a question, like more of a technical question, but this is kind of the first time that w it's not kind of the first time. It is the first time we're doing a, an online sit down and chat uh, thingy. Um, and it's kind of, dare I say, a podcast-ish type of material. Mm -hmm. How long do you want these things to last? Like, should I take questions? I, I'm asking you, like, now as my... Like, are there <laughs> questions? Um, <laughs> there are people, like, saying hi from uh, Central Florida. There's many people saying, like, oh, what about Puerto Vallarta? That could be a cool place. To, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been to Puerto Vallarta yet, but we've been uh, mostly around the Riviera Maya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we love Mexico. So uh, for sure, uh, there will be time spent in Mexico. And uh, we're uh, talking about the States as well. Hawaii being on the, uh, the let's go list. I love Hawaii, not just because I have a special place in my heart because my first threesome was there, but it is a beautiful place. Lots of sexy people, lots of opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But uh, yeah, so... There are people popping in, like saying comments and questions, and should I, like, how long? Because we've been recording for like 40 minutes now. Ah, 40 minutes. Yes. Wow, that goes by so fast. <laughs> uh, so, like we said at the beginning, this is the first live, this is a test. Um, thank you guys for joining and contributing. Yeah, thank you very much. That's very appreciated. Does it say how many people joined in the live? Yeah, it's uh, like uh, right now we have like 15 people what? watching live. That's crazy. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> We're a group of like eight. They care people. about you too. It's mostly you, baby. No. 
<laughs> it's okay. Um, so, do you want to continue? Tell me, like, what's your format for olives and orgasms? Um, for the lives, I feel like there's some comments there. Um, yeah, so a few comments. Um, Supriya says, hypothetical ambience, ambience, beachfront penthouse condo maid prepares breakfast, makes the bed, etc. <laughs> Take the elevator downstairs <laughs> and step into the waves. <laughs> it's a great hypothetical. I love ambience. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, how do we stay in touch? Like, uh, how do we stay in touch? Uh, With me? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, as you guys know, this is a new journey for me, and I'm going to be doing more of these lives uh, in the near future, really just testing the platform and the technology and all that stuff and how comfortable I am live on camera. <laughs> Are you? Do you enjoy this? I do enjoy it, but I'm also not super great at thinking on the spot. You're very good at that. So sometimes I choke on my words a little bit, and I'm like, I don't know what to say. But uh, I think it's going good so far. And... I will continue to be posting videos. I'm looking into figuring out a consistent schedule, if it's going to be twice a week, once a week. I'm still working that out. But I am also building another way that you guys can connect with me on, and that's going to be through Patreon. And I'm currently getting that uh, all wrapped up. So within the next couple of days, I hope to have all that information ready for you. I will post a video about it so you guys can know where to go, um, why I started the Patreon. I talk about a little bit more about my backstory and how I, you know, ended up here and with Gab and the whole creative project thing. And if you guys are interested in supporting me and learning more about me and connecting and, you know, talking about the you know, the kind of topics that we're talking about, just keeping it, you know, real and there's, you know, no taboo subjects here. Um, you know, you can. So I'll let you guys know about that soon. And I would like to do a few other YouTube lives. Like these are fun. I love hearing your feedback and uh, it's really cool that you guys are joining. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's the first time that, uh, it's not the first time I'm doing a live, but it's the first time that there I have an people. audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, pretty cool to have like a live reaction. I also think that will give you material to talk about. Like, uh, Yeah, absolutely. I would love to hear, you know, some... I would love for you guys to feed me some content. I have such a long list of things to talk about. And this is like an endless subject, like sex, relationships, love, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you guys can always feel free to contribute. Let us know what's on your mind. Let us know about some funny, awful great experiences <laughs> you've had that uh, we could shed some light upon because if you went through it I am sure that other people are going through it as well and it would be uh, very reassuring to them to know that right um, I agree I agree with everything you just said and um, shall I close the show uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. If you guys have any last comments, last questions, you guys got a minute to write them in there. And, um... So, I know Gabrielle is an hotelier. Hotelier? Is that a word? As uh, in you? Yeah. Is that how you say it in English? Hotelier. Hotelier in French. I don't hotelier. know. Um, but what about you, Ali? That's a question that we just had from Supri. Oh. Uh, well, I am... <laughs> I don't do it. So I'll give you a bit of backstory. If you say, right now I'm unemployed. No, um, I'm not really unemployed. But uh, prior to working in the hotel industry, which is where I sort of work now, I worked as a therapist for children with autism. That was my profession for a long time. I, uh, yeah, that's what I did. I also owned a business for about seven years it was a trampoline fitness studio, and come the pandemic, uh, life kind of changed a little bit. I didn't lose my job. I didn't lose my business. I was actually working more than usual, which was great. I was very grateful to not have um, lost any of that. But as rewarding and as much as I loved what I did, I was starting to get a little bit tired um, working with children uh, with special needs and also in the fitness industry that I was in 
it uh, takes a lot of energy from you because you give so much to people and you know I love giving myself to people it's just in my nature but it was starting to take a toll on me and I was starting to get tired and I felt like I was needing a transition and pandemic came and I made a change I decided to sell my business which I was very grateful to do so to sell a fitness business during the pandemic and I left my profession, which was really hard to do. But then uh, I came to work in the hotel uh, industry with Gab. And uh, I mean, it's just not the hotel specific industry. It's just like working with a startup business, all that stuff. Like I like that stuff. So it was um, it was a big change, but it was a lot of fun, lots of hard work. And, you know, now we're here at a point where I'm s we're still supporting um, our project, but we have time to do other things as well now. So trying to, you know, live the dream and tap <laughs> into uh, some creative projects with some passions and yeah, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. That's a great story, baby. Thank you. And I think uh, we uh, should like <laughs> wrap it up just because... We've been talking for an hour almost. Oh, my God. And uh, we should do it again. Yes. Well, we'll do it again. Save your questions for next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so let's do it again. It was really uh, enjoyable. It was Sit so down. much fun. Thank you for joining. Thank, Thank you for supporting you. me in my first live. He's so good at navigating situations like this. I appreciate it. You're the best. Like, you turn it on like that. Like, <laughs> you come out of the shower and it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the microphone. My close hey up. guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, give us your feedback. Let yeah, us know like what you thought. Let us know like, uh, if we can improve anything. Content let let me know if you want Gab to participate again, you know. or <laughs> No, don't ask. I'm too afraid of no. the question. He is so entertaining. And uh, he, yeah, he's an open book. Anything you want to ask, you ask him. And you can ask me too. But um, we're That's a team, so... We're a team. But let's focus on you. You're our <laughs> queen. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to press the little button yes, to stop. Yes, we're going to stop now. Yes. I just posted a video last night, too. If you guys want to check it out, it's called... What is it called? Giving head to a girl. That's what it's called. <laughs> going down on going a girl. Going down on a girl. <laughs> That's what it's called. I was so tired when I filmed that yesterday, but uh, our, we had just had a recent experience that kind of sparked some inspo for that conversation. So there's a lot of things that I didn't say in that video that I'll, you know, we'll talk about it at another time, but I needed to just kind of get it out there while it was in my head. So I hope you enjoy it. And yeah. That was a crazy evening. That whole evening should be told as a story. Oh, as it a will legend. Be told as a story. <laughs> Wait for which story time. <laughs> which we will next time. Um, well, that's it. Thank you, baby. That's it. Oh. Thank you, guys.